exciting or scary again do tell me what you think that was Samantha Dover there from Mintel looking at some of the new tech impacting the beauty industry just to say uh, we have got a lot of results coming at the end of this week and markets are quite concerned about banking news on Friday that spooked markets on Wall Street you're up to date I'll see you soon Hello, live from London, this is BBC News. Final preparations for President Joe Biden heads to Northern Ireland to mark 25 years of the Good Friday Agreement. A day after China wraps up military drills, the US and the Philippines start their biggest joint exercises. President Zelensky says an area of Ukraine roughly the same size as Syria has been contaminated by landmines since the Russian invasion. Hello and welcome, I'm Ben Bulos. We begin in Northern Ireland where the final preparations are being made for Joe Biden's visit to mark the anniversary of the signing of the Good Friday Agreement. The White House says the US President is very excited for his trip, which will also take him to the Republic of Ireland where he has his ancestral roots. He'll land in Belfast later today from where Charlotte Gallagher sent this report. Okay, Shaima, thank you very much. Shaima Khalil there, our correspondent in Tokyo, monitoring developments around those military drills. I'm Ben Bulos in London and around the world, this is BBC News. Hi, my name is Ollie and I love See you. So, I'm cutting my hair to raise money for Skegness Natureland and donating it to the Little Princess Trust. How long have you been growing your hair for? Um, my whole entire life. I barely even have my hair cut short, so I wanted to do it for the seals and for people who, and the Little Princess Trust, for people who have cancer, who need wigs. He's never had short hair. He's had trims because obviously you've got to keep it in good condition, but he's never had it since school above his shoulders it's always been very long his aim was always to grow it down to his bum so <laughs> i'm really impressed with him and i am really proud of him and he's very excited to do it i'm back with a new hairstyle feels exciting live from london you're watching bbc news as President Biden prepares to head to Northern Ireland, we can speak now to our reporter in Belfast, Charlotte Gallagher. Charlotte, presumably a very high security presence, which we can see a glimpse of just over your shoulder there. Final preparations are being put in place in Northern Ireland for Joe Biden's visit to mark the anniversary of the signing of the Good Friday Agreement. Just to recap our top story this hour, the White House says the US president is very excited about his trip. The visit also takes him to the Republic of Ireland, where he has his ancestral roots. And you can see how people are embracing their chance to welcome the US president, decorating the streets with US and Irish flags. There's even a mural of the president. Play more coverage of that here and on the BBC News website. Uh, but for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.
Now on BBC News, the latest business news from across the globe. World Business Report. Hello, this is BBC News. I'm Sally Bundock with the top business stories. It's the annual powwow of central bankers and finance ministers in Washington. The IMF sets the tone, warning of weak economic growth over the next five years. China's inflation slows to an 18-month low as sluggish food prices keep inflation under control. Cruising back into action, we speak to the boss of Carnival to find out how the cruise industry has bounced back from the pandemic blues. And using tech for perfection, the beauty industry embraces artificial intelligence to boost sales and make its products more personable. If you've just joined us, you're in time for the top business stories. And we start with the big picture. The global economy is expected to grow at a paltry rate of 3% over the next five years. That's according to the head of the International Monetary Fund, Kristalina Georgieva. And her comments were made ahead of the IMF and World Bank's spring meetings, which kick off today in Washington, D.C. Our North America business correspondent, Samira Hussein, is there. OK, Alan Vohmerin from Danske Bank, thank you very much indeed. Around the world, this is BBC News. Hello again, you're with BBC News. We're live, we're in London and we're bringing you the top business stories. So we're going to focus on China a little bit longer because uh, today the president of Brazil, Inácio Lula da Silva, is arriving in Shanghai. He's due to meet his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping on Friday. That will be in Beijing. China is Brazil's largest trading partner and discussions over trade and investment will be high on the agenda. Let's talk to Joao da Silva about this, our Asia business reporter, who's going to be watching this very closely, Joao. And... For uh, President Lula, this is such a key relationship, isn't it? Samantha Dover there from Mintel. So let's quickly look at financial markets. It was a fairly positive session in Asia today. You can see Japan ending the day up just over a percent higher. Hong Kong, a third of a percent higher, but the price of oil going up and up still. This all following the surprise cut in production that was announced uh, almost, well, just over a week ago. Um, again, surprise move. Let's look at Wall Street. Don't forget that European markets are gearing up for their first day of the trading week. They'll open in 10 minutes time. That was the scene on Wall Street. They did start their week on Monday, as usual, stateside. The Dow up by a third of a percent. It fairly flat, if not muted markets. I have to say that traders globally will be watching the Washington DC spring meetings fairly closely. Any comments coming from central bankers will be uh, watched and weighed in terms of what's ahead, certainly when it comes to the US central bank, the Federal Reserve. I'll see you soon. Live from London, this is BBC News. Final preparations for a president. Joe Biden heads to Northern Ireland to mark 25 years of the Good Friday Agreement. A day after China wraps up military drills, the US and the Philippines start their biggest joint exercises. President Zelensky says an area of Ukraine roughly the same size as Syria has been contaminated by landmines since the Russian invasion.
Hello and welcome to the programme, I'm Ben Boulos. We begin in Northern Ireland where final preparations are being made for Joe Biden's visit to mark the anniversary of the signing of the Good Friday Agreement. The White House says the US President is very excited about his trip, which will also take him to the Republic of Ireland where he has his ancestral roots. He lands in Belfast later today. Our correspondent Charlotte Gallagher is there. That was Mike Turner there. I'm Ben Boulos and around the world this is BBC News. What do I like about my job? Everything. I love the fact that I work in a place full of so many interesting, intelligent and innovative people. I love the fact that when I come into work, I know that I'm going to tell a story or many stories to viewers both in the UK and around the globe. But I know how important that is in the age that we're living in. I also love the fact that I get to speak to so many different people every day and get them to tell me their stories. As a chief presenter here at the BBC, it's my job to be across what's happening. So in the morning I get up and the first thing I do is I look at what's happening in the papers digitally. I come into work and I talk everything through with my team. Through the day I'm listening to podcasts, listening to what's happening on the radio and watching, uh, I have to say, some of the competition as well sometimes. I think it's really important for people like us to be across what is happening in the news because we are the ones who you are relying on to give you the full facts. Live from London, you're watching BBC News. In just an hour's time, Switzerland's parliament will begin a three-day emergency session debating and discussing the takeover of the banking giant Credit Suisse by its rival UBS. The takeover was forced through by the Swiss government last month amid fears that Credit Suisse, one of the world's biggest banks, could have been about to fail after its shares dropped dramatically. Well, let's go live now to the capital, Bern, where we can speak to our correspondent, Imogen Folks. Imogen, you and I spoke, didn't we, I think, that weekend where uh, politicians and senior bankers were meeting, well, late into the hours of Sunday evening to try and secure a deal before the markets opened. Um, what will this parliamentary session be looking at in, in specific detail? Final preparations, just to remind you, are being put in place in Northern Ireland for President Joe Biden's visit to mark the anniversary of the signing of the Good Friday Agreement. This is our top story this hour. The White House says the US President is very excited about his trip. The visit will also take him to the Republic of Ireland, where he has his ancestral roots. You can see there how people are embracing their chance to welcome the US President, decorating the streets with US and Irish flags, and there was even a mural of the president as well. It was 25 years ago that the Belfast Good Friday Agreement was signed, bringing to an end decades of violence and uh, stability. And Mr Biden said he was looking forward to commemorating the anniversary. He has a busy schedule. When he arrives, he'll be greeted by the UK Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, uh, and there'll be an opportunity to uh, meet Stormont politicians, members of the Northern Ireland Assembly, which is, of course, currently not fully operating because of a breakdown in the power sharing uh, relationship over the post-Brexit trading arrangements. So um, perhaps that topic will come up in the conversations. Uh, the White House spokesperson said President Biden was very much looking forward to going to Belfast and despite recent security concerns is more than comfortable making this trip. We we'll have plenty of coverage of that trip throughout the day right here on BBC News and on the BBC News website. Don't go away, I'll see you very soon. Hello, it's been a spell of hot weather recently across parts of Spain and Portugal relative to the